This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the Word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for Spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. One. Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. Cabby's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 458. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, friends. Um, this is quite a, a week we have ahead of us um, because we have Halloween on Thursday. So it's always a, a time when we try to even get extra prayer time because oh, of this. Although politics has kind of been like Halloween for the last couple of months. It has. <laughs> but, you know, we're just one week away from the elections. We actually voted uh, today because we had early voting and we wanted to go ahead and get that in. Some people are saying that... Um, it's better if you can vote early because then if someone tries to, you know, use your, your name or something for voting, they'll, it'll come up that you've already voted. So, but we cast our vote today and uh, we are preparing for this week, aren't we, sweetheart? We are. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going on spiritually. Um, although the enemy's up to a lot of things, I think God's up to a lot of things. Well, well I've been, was so thankful for the peace that we felt on the fall feast yes those high holy days and even the sabbaths during this time uh, there's just been a presence of the lord there so strong for us and you know those are the times when um, we kind of recoup is when when we can have those days to just rest and and pray and um, of course we have a you know a dinner and the regular things that we do but uh, we've noticed that that if we can get before the Lord on those days that just seems like he's he's close and uh, you can get answers quicker and so I pray that you all had that those restful times too I wanted to um, give some updates um, I got to talk to Troy's wife and uh, I was asking her how he was doing with the chemo and he's not had nausea and I, that is such an answer to prayer. Thank you guys for praying for yeah. him. They're just on schedule with the treatments. And uh, we continue to ask God to just uh, rebuild his immune system faster than, you know, the chemo can affect it. And uh, the same thing for uh, Terry. I got a, a note from his wife. And uh, they've had a really rough couple of weeks. She said he's no longer septic. But he's still not doing well. Um, he's getting weaker. He had what they thought was a stroke, but it was not. But he was very confused and disoriented. His motor skills were just about gone. Um, what the hospital is telling them is they don't um, they don't think that chemo is uh, one of the options now at this point, and they're recommending uh, that it's time for hospice. So they definitely need a miracle. Yes. And we're going to pray for that. We ask you to pray for that, to strengthen his wife, their family, during this time. I also got an update 
from Joanne's husband, who's been awaiting a heart transplant. And um, she had a significant milestone for transplant, transplant clearance, where she had a diagnostic procedure for her heart, and the surgeons concluded that she needs major surgery. And it's actually scheduled for today, so I've been praying about that. I ask you to pray today, uh, too, that you know that is successful surgery that that the god would just touch those surgeons uh he placed on the the email here we pray that god provide wisdom and guidance to all those involved in the surgery we pray that god's might will be on full display miraculous healing and recovery so that he is glorified and we are praying that too so if you would hold up joanne today this is a specific day to to pray for her uh I also saw something on uh, on YouTube that I wanted us to pray about. Mario Morello, who's holding those huge tent meetings um, and seeing people saved and healed. I saw this week that um, his brother has passed away, who's just 11 months older than him. I, I know they were very close, he said. And he said he was a very healthy person. And uh, so while he's going through this grief, He's also been fighting sickness. You could tell on the, on the video that, that he was not feeling well. And he was, um, he was uh, determined that he was going to be at the tent crusade. I think it started this, this last Sunday. So I just was going to ask you to pray for him. Yeah, anytime and lift you're on the front up. lines like that, I mean, he has, uh, he has won gang members and there's so many mm -hmm. to the Lord. And, and he's, you're, he's, you're going, when you're on the front line, you are going to be a target. And he's very vocal yes. about, you know, the things in the government and and had a lot to say about false prophets. And so if you would just join us in praying for him. We got to meet him well, just by happenstance years ago. He was at a Sam's Club when we were there. Got to talk to him for a few minutes. And so we are sure praying for him. Of course, we're praying over the election. Um I, I think it's one of the, the things that we can do is to pray over this election that, that evil leaders will be taken out of position. And you can leave it in that vernacular so that you don't feel like you're praying a, a, you know, a witchcraft prayer or something. But that's a safe prayer for all of us to say is, is Father, we know what wicked leaders do. We're asking you to block them from coming back into power. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We watched a video last night. It was an interview with Candace Owens, and it was a reporter that's been in, in the midst of all this stuff out in out California, uh, as well as researching Kamala Harris, and connecting her mom to MK Ultra was really eye-opening to me. I'd never heard that before. I haven't either. And in, in fact, from what I understand, from what he explained on the video, that you know Cameron kind of started it up in the um, was kind of the, the ramrod behind it up in Canada. And after he kind of passed the torch on to her. And so this, this is a, a, a major revelation, as well as you just simply talked about the whole corruption, as well as her entire career and, and the corruption with it. Well, it um, might explain what we saw that one man that um, has a lot of knowledge about the elite families and things that are going on, because um, the person doing the interview said, you know, how she was not an intellectual. And, and he was saying... Uh, more than what this man thought. And now I've met some program multiples um, that just front part that you would meet on the street, that you would talk to, did not seem like they were an intellectual person at all. As a matter of fact, you, you would probably question how they just did their jobs and, and things like that. It would be apparent. And that's kind of how like Kamala is. And that would explain it if, if she is. You know, I, I never really considered that for her because usually if you meet a program multiple, even the front parts are intelli intelligent. You know, that intelligence comes from, you know, not only their own mind's ability, but, but because they have high-level demonic activity that's guiding them. So they'll, they'll usually look kind of on top of their game. And she, she almost looks like, it, it's reminded me of what we talked about last week about jesters 
and how there was the Freemasonry, you know, royal order of the jesters and clowning around and things like that. That's how she acts most of the time. Well, I, I think one of the things that it answered me in that, in that interview, and we're going to post, um, I'm gonna, I'll look it up and I'll post a link in our description to mm -hmm. that, that interview. Uh, she has a persona based upon the crowd that she's in. I mean, her accent will change. She will go from uh, a yuppie that from California to more sophisticated up in New York to speaking Southern or... Uh, Which is also one of the... Um the propensities of a program multiple they is become it, a chameleon they, type they of can, thing. and they can talk in uh, different languages they can do different dialects and it, it kind of made sense to me because i thought i thought that would that would explain why they would think they could use her possibly is because she would have everything in the back and that's what i've seen with the people i've come across is is when you do see what's in the back it'll almost bowl you over because you're just seeing the front day-to-day -day consciousness that's interacting with people. And when the back shows up, it will alarm you. Mm -hmm. And so that might be something that we can pray about with her. I'll definitely pray about it if it is because there are specific prayers that we can say to block that, yep. that demonic power. As, as well as this pleading the blood of Jesus over so they can't switch her at will. Uh, but I, I, there is... The, one of the things I think we're seeing is a major move, and you know, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of research for my next book. And that we have always talked about when we get down to the, you know, the ten toes on the, uh, on the the, the vision of uh, Nimrod mm -hmm. or not Nimrod, but Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar yeah. And they have always speculated that that was the EU with the with the five nations. Well, the EU has more than five nations in it now, or ten nations in it now. But they're looking at dividing the world up into 10 regions, and this, this has been a long desire of them. And each region, I, I think, is going to be watched over by a corporation that they're... Uh, when, when it's interesting, when you look at the kings that give their power over to the Antichrist, it says they were given power for one hour. So it's not like this long lineage of like the kings of Europe and this type of thing, or, or even politicians. It's in the corporate world that they're that they they're able to seize power away from governments, and then when they get it, they turn it over to the Antichrist. And so the the corporate world has is, is has so much to do with what's going on, and what's alarming. They I mean they control our food, they control our medicine. Uh, they're they're pumping. They're the ones who pump billions into politics. I mean, uh, I, I saw jokingly on Babylon B that. You know how race car drivers wear the jackets that have the, everybody that sponsors them. They're, they said that we need to have that with politicians so that we actually know who's paying their salaries. Uh, it, it, it has gotten that bad in so many areas. And oh, these, these corporations have no, no allegiance to whatever nation they're serving, whether it's America or anybody else. They're, they're multinational corporations that all it is is about the bottom line and increasing their profit. And uh, all the morals have really gone out the window in, in many aspects. And so we, we see that. And so uh, we could literally be having a Manchurian candidate, although I think the last one that we had was kind of the same way because it was just the machine running things rather than him actually running things. And so this is something that we need to really pray about. Well, and I think our prayers can change things. I think one thing that can help determine the outcome is if believers will make a commitment to press into God so that so that the nation can be used. Yeah. You know, right now we're the one that promotes pornography. We've got all these horrible things that are coming out of our nation. And I think if we could see the godly men raise up um, and fight the Jezebel spirit, for instance. Yeah. I mean, there's so many homes, Christian homes, to where, you know, the women have been forced to take the lead. Or sometimes if there's a Jezebel spirit there that um, through a wound or some other thing, the, the man will just kind of go to the background. We need um, those fathers to stand Godly up. Godly men to raise up. Right, because yep. you won't have your house in order. There, there's headship. It can't be avoided. You know, people like to say, oh, no, there's... But there's headship, there's things in order in God's kingdom. If we want to flow in his kingdom, we're going to have to be committed to taking those steps. And that's, that's what I would encourage every family to do because we had to do it. We had to look at our, our family and it was 
primarily me in the beginning because I was the one that was, um, I, I saw that I was operating in a Jezebel spirit. And so I knew that for us to be free, for us to go on and, and uh, fulfill what God wanted us to do to work in his kingdom, we were going to have to get our house back in order. And it took some work, didn't it? It did. And both of us had to realize that because of basic evangelical charismatic positions, it had put us spiritually to sleep. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even know it. And well, so, and I think what was with me had put you spiritually yeah. asleep. It was work because God told me that. I had to repent and ask him to forgive me for what I had done that had, had put him to sleep and, and had it, asked for restoration. And I thank you. That I, I, I ran across one statistic this week I thought was alarming, that half of those who identify as Christians in America aren't even registered to vote. That's an alarming mm -hmm. Um, well, there's always statistic. been this separation of church and state. You just put it to the side and just say, oh, just, you know, it's all, most people think it's all rigged anyway, which obviously we've, we've contended well, with that. And I think part of the rigging is convincing them not even to register to vote. But I, I can promise you this, I can promise you this, when Trump was running against Hillary, um, she was supposed to be the one that won. And that was that was the the rig deal, but God just intervened in that. And then I, I you know, I was wondering why um, Biden won, and then it became apparent because, you know, it's like I told you, I, I didn't watch the inauguration, but I had a vision on that day, and I, I saw him, and it's like a camera, and it panned to the side, and they were all made out of cardboard, and I thought, okay, so God's getting ready to reveal you know, the fake, what's fake. He's getting ready to reveal the corruption. And at this point in time, I, I can't even imagine what it would take for people not to see the corruption. And, you know, it's, it's just a, a pretty good picture of the state of affairs in our nation and how people have been put to sleep, how things are out of order. Um, I, I met many families in the last 30 years that, um, you, you just couldn't get them to break that out of order sink that they were in. Uh, the men just just wouldn't pick it up for whatever reason. They wouldn't pick it up. The women felt compelled to, to try to go forward. And especially in families, if, they're, if they've had Freemasonry and things like that, it becomes a really complex itch, issue spiritually. And I think it takes, it would take, my problem has always been this, it would take a team to minister to a whole family. Yeah. You know, at, I, I was compelled to do that in the beginning because there were kids and I thought, well, we have to give it a try. But I would never on my own take on a family to minister to them, to counsel to them, unless both parents agreed. Both parents would have to be <clears throat> in there because if you start <clears throat> messing in spiritual issues and you don't have the head of the house taken over and no spiritual warfare, you're going to open up a can of worms. Well, I, I think we're in a, in a season, especially now, that if you're not willing to fight for your family, then God's going to hold you accountable. Yeah, He will. That there's he this will. idea, well, somebody else is going to come in and do it. We're not in that season anymore. Mm -mm. That... The only time that people will come in to assist you is if you raise up and you begin to fight and you need backup. Well, and, and my uh, concern for all these years has always been things aren't going to go like they've gone in the past. You know, one of the determining factors for even in, in the past years that I would even consider praying with people is I knew that if they came in against us, then they, if they were sent in, like a, a family that was programmed multiples and they were sent in against us, they weren't going to get the job done because God had, had faithfully protected us all this time. Yeah. So then that puts them in a vulnerable state of if you don't get your mission done, retaliation. then retaliation is going to yeah. hit you. And I, and I had started that with some people and I saw the retaliation starting and I thought, okay, we can't do it because you can't minister to a family if the head of the house isn't going to help and, then, and then learn spiritual to, warfare. They expect you to pick up the pieces of the retaliation. And, and you can't <laughs> yeah, do it and because can't. what it is, is, is Satan's going to steal every penny they have. 
He's, he's going to put sickness on him faster than you can, can pray him through it. It's, it's not a simple situation to look at. And my concern is we're at crunch time to where if the men don't raise up, and I'm going to pray about that at the end of this, if the men don't raise up and take their place, then you're going to see the biggest attacks you have ever seen in your life. I, and I'm not, I'm not speaking that as a prophetic thing It's going to happen. I just know the enemy. And he will hit where he can hit. And I want to... Sh- um, I kind of got tickled. We were listening to a preacher that really ministers to men. And he was talking about how when, you know, some families come to his church, and I mean, there's Harleys out front, and there's big four-wheel drive trucks and everything else. And, and, uh, and one of his, you know, taglines is strong men make, make safe places for, men, for women and children. And uh, he made this comment. He said, he said, these are the guys that you want with you during the apocalypse that know God, but also, they also know how to fight. But until then, they're in the bouncy house with the kids playing. And that's the key. The key is if you don't have a strong leader in your home that knows spiritual warfare, that is saying, I have got to step up. I've got to step up and help my family. Um, Because I was, I've told you this before, um, to the public I would have been just very passive. I tried not to cause trouble, but I had back personalities that had been placed in me. And they were as, um, I think my great aunt used to call it as tough as wit leather, whatever that meant. But I mean, they were tough. And, um, but I, I knew, I knew that he had to take the lead and he always could take the lead in ministry, no matter what, he always could take the lead when he was preaching things like that. But because of the house he was raised in, it was, it, it just wasn't taught to him to take the lead. And so, but it's crucial now Mm-hmm. It's crucial. And what, what you'll see is the enemy says, okay, okay, you are, if, if I don't keep this nation, if I don't keep this going in this bad way, and God's people are going to raise up and interfere with what I'm doing, I'm going to take anybody I can take. I'm going to cause mm-hmm. you so much trouble that, that I may not be able to take your life, but you may wish you were dead by the time. That's and, the way he does. And the, I mean, this is the, uh, a principle that we see all throughout the word. Why? Why did Eve sin? Because Adam remained silent. In, in fact, in, De- yeah. in Deuteronomy 30, uh, it talks about if your wife or your daughter that's still living with you even goes to the temple and makes an oath to God mm-hmm. about something. And the first time that you hear it, the first time that you hear it as the husband or the father, if you disagree with it, you can say, no, we're not going to do that. And heaven says, we'll respect that. That is nullified. Heaven's not going to hold her accountable. But he goes on to say that if that vow that they made was wrong and you were silent, that does not go on that woman. Mm -hmm. Heaven holds the man responsible. Even though Eve was the one who ate of the fruit, the Bible says that Adam was right there with her and it's known as the sin of Adam, not the sin of Eve. Mm -hmm. That there is a spiritual principle from the very beginning that Adam set his, his uh, rod of authority, and I get into that in the kingdom priesthood, that, that's uh, Malay in Hebrew, which can be interpreted the shepherd staff that is able to stop chaos. That was the authority that God gave him, and he set it down in the garden. And let me tell you something, there, 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 there have been entire dialogues the rabbis have talked about regarding the silence of Adam mm-hmm. and how to overcome it. Because it, it is it is... It is something that is a rarity, and I, I think it expresses kingdom when a man can stand, and you because we, we have two dichotomies here. We have someone that uh, overextends their authority, and, and they're really a rear end about it, okay? You, ha- you have that kind of guy, yeah, and a, a lot, and a of, lot of times the truth be known is they're actually a coward, and, they're, and that's masking their cowardice, Okay. Or you have the guy that says nothing and lets the, the wife do everything. That way, if it doesn't turn out right, he can, he can complain and say, well, it's all her or fault. She just, did it. He, or he's just been put to sleep. Yeah, or he's been put you know, to we're sleep. Not, we're not judging people. We don't want this to come but across the, as judgmental. The, we're just trying to teach from the perspective we came from that I, I know we could have not made it all these years had I not went through that process and yeah. you went through that process. Well, Genesis 3 teaches us there are, there are two uh, things that we've got to watch for. 
Number one, that it's easy for a man to set down his authority and let someone and let his wife make the decision, okay? And, and that, that's a propensity that we as men have to work on as well as learning how to move in authority while moving in love at the same time. And it also shows us that it's easy for women to be deceived. The Bible says she was deceived. Uh, but what's you know interesting... That's why it's called the head covering. Yeah. The head covering. The head covering. <laughs> uh, you know, but what's... And, and sometimes we misinterpret stuff when you look at uh, the synagogal system that, was ex uh, that existed in Jesus' day. The men sat up front and the women were up in the balcony. And we look at that and say, them chauvinist pigs, don't we, from, from the 21st right. century. But when you, when you look back at their attitude, Adam messed up. He needs the most mm -hmm. instruction. The women were less sinful and they were in an elevated state. And so the rabbi said, if we can fix the guy, we can fix the home. And, and I, I look at that and say that was the model. The Apostle Paul didn't have a problem with it. Jesus didn't have a yeah. problem with it. And, you know, for the first time now that we're seeing in, in modern history, men are becoming spiritual again, that they're, they're, they're wanting to take up their authority. Yeah. They're, they're wanting That's to do things. And so, guys, we, we, I, I think it's because heaven is stirring it because we're going to need it in the days ahead. And what we have got to do is make sure that we don't give into that propensity to lay it down in crucial moments or mm -hmm. to take it beyond its boundaries. Because, you know, in, in situations when you're fighting for your family, your wife's not your problem. Okay? Your, your, your kids are not your problem. It's the, the external things that are manipulating everybody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to fight for your mate to get free. you got to fight for your mate uh, right. to be spiritually awakened once again because Babylon has put them to sleep right. or your children. you got to be able to fight for them spiritually first and then physically if you have to. That's right. And we, we've really had to pray and ask God for guidance on even who our family gets close to um, because we've, we've seen it for years. Now, if, if there was a family and... We had a prayer team of about 20 people and we could get that family in and we could pray them through everything that, that would be prayed through and it would be a challenge, I can tell you that, and, and many counseling sessions that we wouldn't have time for right now and we don't have people here. But I can tell you, we, we have to gauge, even Steph and her kids, because of what we've went through and we've seen people attacked coming after us, you have to balance, okay, God, what can we do? What can we pray? Um, who can we have in a setting that they're not going to be destroyed because they're in the setting where there's such strong spiritual warfare coming at us? Or and to, is, or, is or that family the is the family out of order to such a degree we can't? Yeah, or they have an open door that you think they're a part of your uh, your 120 or your 70 or your 12 that they end up stabbing you in the back over something. Well, and we've seen that not recently, but years ago. Yeah. I mean, they were being sent in to infiltrate, and that's why there's so many in the churches. Um, and, and the reason that you don't, they aren't manifesting, that nobody knows they're there, is they're getting their job done. Yeah. They, they know well things like Halloween. They know well the, the things that are doors. And that's why, that's why they don't manifest. They're getting, getting their jobs done. But if you, know, if you see a family and there's somebody in that family so gripped by fear that they shake and they can't, even, they can't even stand the thought of looking at something, then back off and pray. Unless you've got a team there, unless you had a team prepared to help that whole family, then you got a mess on your hands. If, if the man won't take up the lead, if he won't take the headship, and, and because that's necessary in spiritual warfare. And we've learned this just by trial and error and yeah. all of the seeking God and looking at the word in every way we could. Because this isn't, um, you know, there's nothing in the world that I love more than feeding people. Sitting at the tables and feeding people. And God's given me the place in the conferences to do that. Um, it's just, it just warms my heart to be able to do it. And I, I used to love to do that at my home. And I got, I got to the place, I thought, God, what, how are we going to handle this? And he said, you can't bring people to your home. 
And so what I did is I took, when we, Mike was having some uh, teachings and we'd have people come in, I tried to make that setting like a home and I tried to, to bring them in there. Um, we're, in, we're in a transition period right now to waiting on God to show us exactly what to do. Um, but I, I don't want to put people in danger. And even if they're sent in against us, my, my, my heart is that they would get saved and quickly say some prayers and get to safety. Yes. But, but there is such, a, and God told me this years ago, and we've seen it, there are so many angels around this, this ministry by the grace of God that, that it doesn't hit. You know what I'm saying? Like the, like the normal things that, that people go through, God has just put shields up. And, and, of course, we, we cover any doors with the blood of Jesus because we've seen how much we didn't know. You know, there are still things. Like, like here's, I'll give you a couple of things that, that I do that probably nobody else would even think about because I, I got tired of getting hit over things. You know, when we decorate for fall, God made pumpkins. So I don't think there's anything wrong with setting a pumpkin out and, and um, you know, just have a little floral decoration or something like that for a table setting. But I don't ever get any pumpkin with writing on it because I'm thinking, okay, that'd be like something they do. Say, you know, that's, that's the same as carving. So I, I threw a bunch of stuff away I had after I thought about that. I thought, I better not sit that out. Because if you've got infiltrators around you, they are looking. They want to get in your home. They want to look for anything yeah. they can to hit you. Well, the Apostle um, Paul had to deal with that. They're, they were sent in to spy out our liberty. Right. And, and they're looking for weak spots to hit. And it's, it's not that I have anger anymore. Now, used to, I had to fight through anger. Because you get mad when you have people coming after your kids and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I, I finally just saw how what a predicament this is for somebody to be trapped in the occult. They, they, don't, they want to come in and be safe with you. They feel safe with you. But then they're compelled to fight you at the same time. And so it, it was quite a deal what we've walked through. And I've tried to seek God on it. But my main concern has been for them. You know, if, if somebody's going to come out of something, they got to be determined. The whole family's got to be in there. And you got to come out quick. It's part of the reason I never went to any of my extended family members I thought they're not going to they're not going to take this and roll with it. They're not. It's it's Freemasonry blinding. I thought there's no way they and they would have got destroyed. The enemy would have had things on them. So I I couldn't do that. And so everything we're doing, I, I can promise you this, it's coming from a standpoint of love for others. What can we do to help? What can I pray? But God, you know, I know from the past how these things are. And I don't ever want us to, um, you know, I, I believe that when we go places and we've seen it, I think that the kingdom goes with us just because Mike's got a revelation of walking in the kingdom and, and we've seen God honor that. We're still, are, we don't think we've got all the answers. I look all the time. Uh, it's like the clown thing that we talked about last podcast. I didn't, I, I didn't, I never liked clowns, but I wouldn't have thought about dressing my kid up as a clown years ago. And, you know, we're going to talk about Halloween today. We're not putting people down. We did it too. Yeah. We did, we had no clue. We thought, oh, this is just a fun tradition. And my way of thinking is, okay, we have no witches. Um, you know, we have, after I married Mike, I was trying to do things right. I was in a mess, but I thought, okay, I'll keep the witches out. We'll keep ghosts out, and I'll be a room mother so I can go to the parties, and we'll just have little uh, pumpkins, you know, and just things like that. But I, I believe that any participation in Halloween is a door. I believe if even if, if you have a thing at your church, you can call it a trunk or treat or whatever. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of the churches I want you to pray for simply because I think they've been put in such a vulnerable position and they won't know it. Um, but that's, that's what we deal with all the time. And I, I'm sure we have people that get upset with us because we won't do this or we won't do that. I, I don't have any doubt about that. I don't, I don't hold any bad feelings toward them. I just know that we've learned we've got to seek God and do it exactly the way he's telling us to, not only for our sakes but for anybody that we minister to. So if you'll just know that our hearts are to help people, even people in the occult. We're not, 
uh, you know, we're not vengeful people. No. You know, once I got past my anger at people coming to hurt my kids, I, God took me through that, and I was able to, to get on top of that. And I might add, in the midst of all this, your, your military parts is what we usually call them, or some of my favorite parts. I try to take them oh. on date days. <laughs> they're, they're the parts that really were rough on him in those early, early years because they were, they were trained by people in the, in the military. And so um, my main thought about today is... Maybe if, if you can get some information to people that they can just pray about Halloween. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. I saw one thing where people were saying, well, Halloween was originally because of the Catholic and All Saints Day and all that. They're trying to say, okay, that's God's day, so let's take it. It was never God's it day. It wasn't God's day. This goes back, you uh, know, 2,000 years. In Salon. fact, <laughs> probably if you look on YouTube, Doc Marquis uh, did it, and Doc Marquis was a friend, mm -hmm. as well as, I mean, he's multi-generational Illuminati. Uh, and so if anybody's going to know, he does. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, one with the Prophecy Club, it's called the American Occult Holidays, I believe was it, and it should be on YouTube. But when you realize Halloween is a Druidic holiday, mm -hmm. and that the Illuminati's religion is Druidic, uh, it's a combination of Druidism as well as a belief in reincarnation. And it, it's one of two... Uh, and in fact, it's the only of all the occult holidays that is what, what's known as access holidays. Like when we're celebrating uh, Samhain here, or Halloween here, in it's the Beltane. southern, uh, they're, ce they're celebrating Beltane yeah. in, in the yeah. southern. Both of them require human sacrifice. Now they won't tell you that on if you look it up. You know, like if you go to the... Uh, just the the main origins of Halloween, like I've got some here from the History Channel and another site. They're not going to tell you. They're just they're, they'll tell you about sacrificing animals that the Celts, you know, two thousand years ago would sacrifice animals and things like that. But they're not going to tell you what these occultists do today. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, the whole concept of a wicker man, the, the trick or treat, whenever they would come up to a residence. The, either you gave them somebody to sacrifice and then they gave you a treat or they would curse your home. And they had the wicker man that they would literally put hundreds of people in and set on fire and they did that on Halloween. That's part of the, the human the sacrifice. And the option to that, according to Doc Marquis, was that you could either go in the wicker man or you could bob for an apple in boiling cider. And if you could survive it, when you go down after that apple and come up, you're going to be totally scarred. And that's what I started uh, praying specifically about when I, it was just like God would get me information. And it, and I would find out that after children bob for apples, I noticed there were lots of accidents and, and hurting yeah. their faces. And so I thought, you know, anything, any avenue that, that Satan can use. And I, I found out something that I, if I, if I've seen this before, I have I've not mentioned, or uh, I've not made note of it. I didn't remember it, but this, uh, it was called a day in late October called Feralia, when the Romans traditionally commem commemorated the passing of the dead. The second was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees, and the symbol of Pomona is the apple. And so they were um, stating here that that probably explains the tradition of bobbing for apples. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, but at the same time, I never heard of this Pomona before. And I thought, okay, uh, you know, God made a pumpkin. God made an apple. I think you can have those things there. But there's always things done with it to make it yeah. for their purposes. Uh, and so that's one of the things that I'll incorporate in my prayers now that, that I knew. You know, um, one of the things that years ago I wouldn't have thought anything about was uh, Thanksgiving. People put out cornucopias. And those have a pagan origin. And so, you know, if you're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, that would be one of the things, if I was you, I'd leave off. <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things, number one, the cults were so vicious and so bloodthirsty that they disgusted the Romans, the ones who crucified all their enemies, that we draw Halloween from a, a religion that was so bloodthirsty that it offended the Roman soldiers when when Rome went up there and they That's occupied saying there. Something. Uh, but when I was I was doing research on Mystery Babylon years ago, and I think it was James Lloyd in his book on Mystery Babylon, if I'm remembering right, he was able to trace. Remember when when David was king over Israel, 
one of the things that he did is he ran all the, all the descendants of the Nephilim, uh, the Anakim and, all, and the Raphaim and all that, they ran them out of Israel. He was able to follow the migration and he followed them right up to what became Great Britain so that the foundation of the Celts uh, and the Druids was based upon yeah. the Canaanite Raphaim and their rituals and their belief systems. So this is directly connected with Nephilim doctrine. Well, the Druids were the Celtic priests. Yes. And so, and that's what we've seen in this area, huge amount of Druidic Druidism. activity. Yes. And so Halloween is, is one of those times when they're going to be built in power. Um, let me not get out of order. I, w I listened to a minister that his, his ministry has worked like saving 10,000 kids that were human trafficked. And I had never heard this one. Uh, he's, he said um, on Halloween at the border, children are lined up and abused in a ritual by the cartels in some kind of an honor to the death god. Which is the god they serve as some death god. Cult. And so, so all over the place, and we've known this, that on Halloween there, there are sacrifices. There are, you know, it's, um, to me it's, I always went with my kids years ago when we celebrated Halloween. I would have never let them walk someplace by themselves. But I've seen people just let their kids go. And, and so knowing what's out there, you know, it's, it's not a, a really good time to not be right with your kids on that well, stuff. Well, just look at the contrasting. Okay, Halloween is a time that requires human sacrifice. We, we have this going on all across the nation and within the, the Western world. And while all this is going on, we're out handing out candy. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want, you want to talk about being put to sleep when we should be hitting our knees and praying that God would guide law enforcement and all those to stop these things from mm -hmm. happening? Well, uh, during the celebration, the, the Druids and all the Celts wore costumes typically consisting of animal heads and skins and it attempted to tell each other's fortunes. So now we have this, you know, where everybody's dressing up in costumes and we found which, out which last week. Which can go back week, to yeah, the, the clown thing. Right, because, because there's a significance to what you don, what, you, what costume you put on. And I, I uh, was reminded in, in the word in Isaiah 61.10, it says, um, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. That's what our garments are supposed to represent. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom, bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. And then before that in Isaiah 61, 3, it says, uh, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give the, unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And my, my thought on this is, I think the kingdom of darkness sits back and in glee on Halloween. Because we're putting on costumes, we're taking on the identity of worldly things at best, satanic things at worst. And so it's, it's one of those things that we just need to really be praying this week. I don't think that it's, um, it's an accident that the uh, elections are after Halloween. I think this is supposed to be great power that's built. That's why I think it can mitigate that power if we pray. And, and I always just, I, one of the things that I wanted to have you guys pray about, I always look at the uh, surrounding churches in the area um, that have Halloween celebrations. It's always uh, a help, I believe, that I've noticed if, they'll, if they are going to do something at a church for Halloween, that they do it on another day. This year, because it, uh, Halloween falls on a Thursday, a lot of the churches are, are doing the Halloween things, or they may call it something else, a harvest party or something else. But um, a lot of them have the kids dress up. It's pretty much... They have it in what they consider a safe environment, and they consider it an evangelistic setting. It's why they're doing it. But it's, it's pretty much a Halloween deal. 
And one of those uh, that I looked at just to see if they were having that this year was the James River Assembly of God, which is the very huge church we've talked about before that we pray for in Springfield, Missouri. They have several, several campuses, don't they, with yep. uh, different congregants in those. Um, but when I went there on their site to just check so I could pray if they were having a Halloween party, I noticed that their pastor, John Lindell, had a... Um, teaching on there on abortion and amendment three in missouri we've got an amendment that uh, is going to take away not only take away the ban on abortion uh, but it's got a, a whole lot of other things involved in there too that was one of the best teachings i've ever seen it was i know there's a lot of controversy around that church but i could tell that man that pastor was moved with compassion when he talked about uh and it it's um it's kind of graphics, so you won't probably wouldn't want your kids to watch it if you decide to look at it. But I was I was sit there and I, I couldn't keep from crying. I thought he's anointed to teach this, like he was anointed to teach against yoga. But then I started thinking, uh oh, <laughs> uh, because when I found out about, let me give you a couple of reasons I'm so concerned, so you pray with me, because I love these people and they don't know me. But I pray for them a lot. They have a Starbucks in there, as you know, that you can get coffee. In. And the, when I looked at the, the Starbucks uh, website, they said a few symbols are as recognizable as the Starbucks siren. I'm sure you've seen the symbol. I, I, I wouldn't doubt that these people don't, don't even know what this is. I think they've just come up with a symbol. I think they based it on a name I had never heard. It's uh, Melusine. It's a European folklore figure and a female spirit of fresh water and rivers and holy wells. She's often depicted as a woman with the lower body of a fish or serpent and sometimes with wings or two tails. And that's what that that insignia does. It's got a lot of times in the advertising industry, they know exactly what they're doing, and they and they and, sell it to people. And so um, that it has two tails, the way it comes up on the side. You know, I always used to think, well, it's just it's a mermaid. I was always kind of concerned about it, but I hadn't seen this before, and I thought, now think about this. This is it called the James River Assembly. We've got the James River. <laughs> We've got druids that I guarantee you for months now have been doing rituals in the waters, doing sacrifices to build power to come against churches. So would you pray with me that they don't destroy that church, those people? Yeah. It isn't, a, this is, Halloween isn't like any others. There's so much on the line. Satan's worried. His people are worried. So you can imagine the attacks that are going to happen. And so I don't know how much my prayers can affect this, crying out for mercy. But I ask God to show him truth, and I ask him to show us truth. We don't think we've got all the answers. But that, that was such an effective teaching. There's no yes. way they won't be targeted. Yeah. And so if you would pray for us. And I mean, even with Starbucks here years ago, when they, they said, if you stand for the traditional family, they didn't want your business. That's how woke the corporation itself is. And I, I'm sure that when they put that in there, they said, listen, let's get the most reputable and the best coffee out there just for our people. And I mean. You know, uh, most people haven't gone the route we've gone. No. And, and thank God that that's true. I, I would not want somebody else. When, when you have a cult trying to kill you, all of a sudden you start researching who your enemy is and, use, and find the tactics and, and that you, they use. And I watched them. Yeah. I, I knew who they were. They showed themselves to me. So I had the opportunity. I just monitored them. I, I would go and I would watch them in, in whatever places they were and just seeing, okay, let's see how they, that's why I knew there was something wrong with... Uh, that they had some kind of a connection, a cult connection with our flag. They had an occult connection. You know, that was long before I knew about July 4th and the Illuminati and all of that stuff. Um, and and so, so that's why I pray for people, not because I think, oh boy, we got the answers and, and not in judgment of what anybody's doing, because we used to do this stuff. 
We just went along with it like everybody else did. I just wonder if there were people in the background praying for us that we never knew about. Well, uh, I thank God for out. them. Yeah. I thank God for every one of them that's prayed for us. And so, you know, this is, I, I found this, and I thought this was interesting. I, I've mentioned this before, but it said, did you know more people are buying costumes for their pets? Americans spent some $700 million on costumes for their pets in 2023. So I don't feel bad about buying a new collar for my puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just amazing. Well, and it's, you know, it's just what people do. It's you know, and I, I think part of it, and they're using this against us, most people are so miserable they're that just, they're looking yeah. for anything for a distraction. And, and they're running. I've, yes. I've noticed that with people, that, that they're so miserable, they're, they're just keeping on the go, keeping on the go. They're going to something every minute, can't stop, because they're so miserable, they, they just want to take their mind off things. You know, things are so rough, and, and boy, I understand that. I do. I think I would have done a lot of that when, when we, after we first got married, uh, but I was so depressed, I didn't have the energy <laughs> to run. Uh, you know, it was just, it's just one of those things I understand. Yeah. I understand what it's like to be caught in Babylon. Not only caught in it, but I was, was an agent of it, unaware. And, I was an the, agent of Babylon. And the joy and the happiness that comes from being free is, oh, is what we want people to have. Oh, my goodness, yes. If I could ever, ever pray something for somebody, if they are caught, that they would experience just a day of that freedom. And you would never, you would do whatever you You'd had to do. You'd be addicted to it. <laughs> because you couldn't live without it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was to a degree in, in all of my depression all those years. I, I didn't have a minute's peace. Now, I didn't know that because I'd never experienced peace. I didn't know what it was like. I didn't have a minute of real clarity. And so once I had that... That even though God had to, to bring me back because it was, I had to take authority through Jesus. I had to fight the fight. I felt it. I knew what it was like. Mm -hmm. And so when it came back, and it, and it actually did what the scripture says, if stuff leaves you and, and you don't clean the, the house, which I didn't even know the house cleaning I had to do. It came back stronger. And you not only have to clean the house, you better make sure it's all inhabited by God. Yeah, and, and I was, I no was a mess. I mean, up. God yeah. gave me this miraculous thing, but I, it came back, and I was a big mess, and I had to, to pray my way through that, and it, it took everything I had. But with God, we can do it. And so I encourage you, if you're depressed, if there's things going wrong, um, just, just hang on. There's, if we can get certain things done... I think that we're getting ready to have more help from above than you've seen in a long time. It's just there has to be people fighting. You know, I've fought for years to see the, the cloaking broken. You know, used to, it was right in front of my face and I could see it, but you couldn't get anybody else to see it. It would, they were blinded to it. So we've seen the cloaking broken, but it took many years of we a did. lot of people praying to get that cloaking off. Now everybody can see it. Now we're responsible. What do we do with it? Oh, absolutely. You know, that's part of what I want to get into. And then in, in the days ahead, I think God's going to be revealing a whole lot more. I think in the days ahead, you know, we're, everybody's looking at it. I just wanted to get better. You know, that I just wanted to get better. Well, the only way it's going to get better is you're going to have to fight. And then when it gets better, if you don't keep on fighting and maintaining, the enemy will come back in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's once you start this, there's no letting up. You know, that's why in, in the military, uh, you're always vigilant about the training and the watchfulness and, and gathering intelligence to make sure you know what the enemy is doing and all mm -hmm. these different things. I mean, that was drilled in me when I was in the military. And Paul is dealing in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 18, or uh, and in this, we need to set the stage. These were Gentiles living in a paganized world. They were living under Roman rule. Everything was paganized. You couldn't even go and, let's say, take your family out to dinner. That the first thing that they would do when they, when they would pour the wine is the head of the household would take and he would do a libation offering, pour out a little bit of the wine to one of the pagan gods or goddesses, whatever his household served. And 
Christians wouldn't do that. And you know, let's talk about sticking out like a sore thumb. Everything in society was pagan, okay? And so now the Apostle Paul is ran. And so the, when you got saved as a, as a Gentile, the first thing you realized is everything about my life, everything about my society is pagan. And I've got to, I've got to lay it all down, and now I've got to learn the ways of God. Mm-hmm. Because we have been in the Western world, that because there had been a heavy Protestant influence, we've been asleep at the wheel as these pagan things because, I mean, in, in American history, because of the heavy Protestant influence, and in fact, one time in America, the celebration of Christmas was illegal because of the Baptist influence on the legislatures, mm-hmm. because they knew it was a Catholic holiday, and we don't want popery here, we don't want those pagan things here, but eventually... We, we had watched a documentary, and it was actually done from a, a, a secular point of view. I thought it was really well done. They said that as it became more popular with the Catholics, that the Protestants were afraid that on, on, uh, on Christmas Eve they were going to lose all their congregants because they were rushing to the Catholic Church because they wanted to do Christmas too, that they compromised to begin doing Christmas, and eventually they overturned the laws. Well, even Halloween uh, was was highly restricted mm-hmm. uh, because of the Protestant influence. A lot of that came over with the Irish immigrants. Irish immigrants, they they brought on over. So uh, Paul was dealing with the people that were that were living in a highly paganized, occultic charged civilization, and yet he tells them, and this is starting in verse eleven. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is o- is wide open. And you are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Uh, now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, that's always quoted about marriage. and that's, that's a good thing about marriage. But in context, this has nothing to do with marriage. This has what you do in society. Mm. How you conduct your business, the things that you participate in, the things you don't participate in. Uh, Do uh, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Baal, or what part has uh, has a believer with an unbeliever, for what agreement has the temple of God with idol? For you are the temple of the living God. And so now he's, he's, he's saying, listen, when you as a society, as cultural things, when you participate in these things, you're becoming one with unbelievers. You're, becoming, you're, you're participating in Baal type of things. And, and that, that, that's keeping in context with what he's saying here, okay? And then he goes into some things I think is crucial because they knew back then that if you were a believer in the first century world, your life was always on the line. At any moment, you could be arrested, whether it was by uh, the, the, the rabbis, if you were a Jewish believer, or by the Romans, because they, they viewed Christianity as a threat to, uh, to Roman rule, as well as a worship of the emperor. Uh, in fact, Maria, it got so bad, uh, persecution against Christians, they made it illegal for a while that Christians weren't even allowed to own property that they had no rights. As cit- that you could be a citizen of Rome, but the minute that you became a Christian, you could lose all your civil rights simply because you were a Christian. That's how bad mm. the persecution was. And so these people knew the only way to survive is to have the presence of God. That unless God blesses, unless God protects, I have no protection, okay? And so he, said, he goes on to say, he said, listen, he says, God has said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk, up, walk, and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch, not, and touch not what is unclean. Now, the King James says unclean thing, but when you look in the King James, that's in italics. Mm-hmm. That means that thing isn't there. The translators were trying to make, uh, make sense, sense of the of word because yeah. they didn't know enough about Hebraic heritage. Yeah. That when the Apostle Paul said unclean, anything pagan, anything the Word of God through Moses had already been declared unclean falls within that category. Right. Okay? Uh, and he says, I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the, the Lord Almighty. And I like he said, the Lord Almighty, the one that has all the might. He said, listen, if you want 
the manifested presence of God in your midst, you cannot participate in these things. That you, you have to come out, you've got to, even the concept of, of ecclesia is, is taken from the, the, the Hebrew of Gahal, which means those called out, those called out of Babylon. If I've been called out of Babylon, I can't participate in Babylon and be called out at the same time. Mm. And I, I think we've kind of lost that truth. Uh, and in fact, I think the key is, is really understanding Daniel. And then you also have, uh, although they're not mentioned in the book of Daniel, you have Nehemiah, Ezra, and some of the other prophets that were dwelling in Babylon at the same time. They were in Babylon, but they weren't of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Like how we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. When we participate in these things, we're being worldly. We're being mm -hmm. of the world. And the Apostle Paul said, and, and the entire Word of God says, you cannot do that. Um, even so much when Ezra and Nehemiah, they established the synagogal system, which went from them hearing the Torah three times a year with the, with the spring feast, summer feast, and the, and the fall feast, they developed the synagogal system, which allowed them to hear the Word of God being taught and read every single week. But Mary, when they developed synagogues, they built them outside the city. Mm -hmm. So that in the mind of the Jew, be separate, you got to walk out of Babylon to hear God. You got to walk out of Babylon to be among the prophets. You got to walk out of Babylon and be separate from Babylon and, and receive this empowering so that when you go back in, you're separate from it. But in the midst of it, God can protect you and bless you. And we can't do these things and be like that. You know, even, even John in 1 John deals with our biggest problem is the world, the flesh, and the devil, okay? We, we've got to be separate. That if I, if I will keep myself pure, then the enemy can't touch us. The enemy doesn't have that hook to, to drag me in. And guys, this is going to be a crucial principle for manifesting the kingdom of God in our midst in the days ahead. I believe it. And so we might as well start learning and getting it done now. Yeah. You know, when, when I was in the military, you didn't learn how to shoot when the enemy was shooting at you. You didn't learn how to do maneuvers when the enemy is trying to, when the enemy is attacking you or bombing you, you did learn how to do a convoy and that you had to have three or four uh, links between the convoy when you're doing a convoy so that if somebody drops a bomb, they only get one vehicle instead of four or five of them. You don't learn that in wartime, you learn that in peacetime. I think a lot of things that God is trying to instill in us now is to prepare us for what's coming. God wants us to become bulletproof spiritually, if you will, in the days ahead, but you don't learn that in the foxhole. You learn that in training now as the Holy Spirit begins preparing His people. Mm -hmm. And the remnant are learning how to be free of these things, that we got to set these worldly things aside. I don't care how fun they look. We've got to set them aside. And this is something the enemy has done. I, I remember back in the, uh, in the 90s, they would have cartoons um, where they were using cards and they were kind of like doing battle with them. But they were all occult based. Come to find out it was witches and warlocks that were writing the scripts and only the companies that printed those cards. Mm -hmm. And those were real spells that they were teaching our children to do as they were playing these card games so that later on in school when the occult would try to recruit them, it felt familiar. Well, now it's just out there. It's I out mean, there. They, we've got, I saw a thing the other day with some show they were talking about, and I'm not familiar with the show. but The it originals was, on, on CW. Where they were, they were, they they had vampires and witches and all that stuff. No, it was something about a witch, a group of witches. I don't remember the name, but but they said that it was. Uh, they were they had studied to make sure it was real witchcraft spells, re and yeah. they did were warning you to not let your kids watch it, and you yeah. got to pay attention because sometimes like that one would be obvious, but I mean there's there's other things. Um, you just you just got to look ahead and. and uh... Well, it got so bad with the originals that there were covens that were writing the producers of the shows and saying, "Do you know what you're doing? 
that by letting this in people's living room, you're cursing every family that watches it. Now, when it gets so bad that the occult are writing saying, you need to stop this, it's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, they, they wanted authenticity in their show. Well, they got authenticity, all right, and there's no telling what it loosed uh, in the, in oh, the my, homes. One of my favorite shows when I was young was Bewitched, and I used to read those little uh, comic books called the little, I think it was called the Little Red Witch, or I can't remember. Maybe I'm confusing too. There was a Little Red Devil comic book, and but I mean, I was always reading stuff. Yep. And so, you know, God's calling us out of these things, and we need to realize that we have been asleep at the, at the, at the helm for a long time, and we have been thoroughly paganized, and the church has been influenced uh, by the Illuminati, by the occult, to a great extent. Well, t- keeping your kids away from this stuff is one challenge. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's in everything. And I, I am not putting anybody down or saying, oh, boy, you got to do this or that. I no, mean, it was, it was a, a long process for us. Okay, we probably need to not do this. We probably need to. Yeah. It's just. It's like once you're awake, you see it all before yeah, that. But, you're but just you doing what everybody else is but doing. But it's impossible to make all those changes at once. No, it, I mean, you're just, you're just coming across and, and then trying to deal with family members and trying to convince somebody. I mean, it's, it's not a simple thing. Yeah. But I think that I think it, it will get easier now that the, the cloaking is broken. Yeah. And it, it will be out there more for people to say, ooh, look what they're doing. You and, know? you know, I, I do need to stress, too, that when you, when you do the feast, when you do the Sabbath, to make it a delight, don't make it burdensome on the, on oh, the family. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's just as bad because there's it's... Play, people say that you can't let your kids play on the Sabbath. Um, I mean, there's all, all kinds of things that, and I'm telling you, it would make a kid not want to yeah, participate. The, the only thing, the, the, the restriction on the Sabbath is you don't do your vocational work on the Sabbath. Uh, and, and that's all there is. That's what servantile work is. But I mean, you know, once you, you, know, you spend time in prayer or whatever with the kids to go out and play catch with them or whatever, that's, yeah, I, that's a part of bonding that you don't have time to do. I can't and, imagine that that, that, would, that would be yeah. offensive to God. And so, and now so we've, we've always had our kids... The, the grandkids, Steffi, always um, avoided anything where they had to, like, play, go to games, like play a game on, you know, like if they were in baseball or something like that. Uh, but it's but some of this really takes prayer and God showing you how to yeah. do this, or you're going to have your kids just thrown into rebellion right away. Yeah, because a religious spirit can take hold this as much as it does with yeah, some of the other and, things. Yeah, and so it's, it's just a... It's just a prayerful situation. Yeah. And the other one that I, I want to talk about, and this is Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Uh, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And th- this is what we're called to do. The that we're called not to participate in them, but to expose the evil of them. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say, for it is even shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. And many commentators believe that this is a lot of the rituals uh, that were done in secret with secret societies at the time. I mean, we could, uh, from Bohemian Grove to what, if you really know what goes on in the the Masonic Lodges, and it's really kind of hokey because I don't even think they even realize the significance of what they're doing. An occultist come, can come in there and draw real power from it because they understand the, the, the truth. You know, it's like the original ritual, uh, and Bill Snubble and others share this, that becomes a Freemason is supposed to open up the third eye. Mm-hmm. But because they don't really understand what that is, uh, it might be a rarity, but what it does do is it opens the door because now they're hoodwinked and they said, I'm only going to receive light from that trapezoid altar, which represents the altar of Nimrod. Uh, and so he said, listen, we're, we're required to expose these things, but all these things are exposed to be manifest by what is light. For whatever makes manifest as light, therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Uh, I like what the Amplified says here in verse 11. It says, 
have no part in or have no fellowship with the unfruitful deeds and enterprises of darkness, but instead let your lives be in so in contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. So when I, when I do not do these things, and I out of love can share the truth about them, not judgmentally, but share the truth and saying, I cannot participate in this because this is the origin of it. And I don't care how popular it is. I don't care how much it appeases the flesh. Then uh, uh, I am exposing the darkness, which, uh, began, and it, which may open up the avenue for many people to come out of these things and to be saved. But I, I think what's interesting is when you look at what, how the Apostle Paul, he ends this with calling them out of sleep. Mary, is it possible that as a believer when I do these things as part of the Satan's equation that he uses to put believers to sleep that, you know how when someone first gets saved how on fire for God they are? Right. And after a while it's like they, uh, Bob Mumford used to talk about, you know, after about two years it's like they hit a brick wall. And I, I wonder if that brick wall is not created by our slowly incorporating these things that begin to put us to sleep where we should be going on in Christ and we don't go on in Christ because we've incorporated things that are of, of darkness and oh, don't, I don't even realize it. I don't it. even think it's incorporating. I think it's right there. Like yeah. our kids were everything that was there already in place by the time we had kids. Yeah. It, it and was it was our, things that we did and our parents did before us. Well, and then the, the TV. I yeah. mean... Yeah, it just... <laughs> it grieves you, doesn't it? It does, and it grieves me that I wasn't able to help my kids more. And it's, it's one challenge for anybody today with kids to know, you know, what's the balance on giving them a, a cell phone so they can, you know, call you if they need to, you know, and you, and you know that they get to where they need to be and they're safe and, you know, just regular safety checks. And then letting them have it so much that it affects them. I mean, yeah. it's, it's such a difficult, I just feel yeah. for the younger parents right now. It, it's a balancing act because, you know, there's things like, you know, we, we as a ministry, we use Facebook and Twitter, and, uh, which is now called X, and Instagram and different things to promote what we're doing, uh, as well as YouTube. But these things are also, if you don't use them in balance, they are all set up to be addictive, they are. Be addictive while they really give, you know, who cares how many thumbs up that you get? You know, it's like, well, is, they, this, is this a digital, but it's created to give you a dopamine hit. Yeah, it is. And but, it becomes addictive. But imagine this, like, let me just, you know, I always think of like how I would have handled things back when I was depressed. And I thought, think of like a mom and dad both working, you know, sometimes people are working two jobs to make it. They come home, you know, their, their kids are on, on their phone or something like that. Can you imagine having all the stress of your work, all the stress of everything that's going on right now? You know, people are really struggling with finances. Imagine all that stress. Wouldn't it be the easiest thing in the world for any parent to just say, to just give in? Yeah. You know, Here, here's it, a phone, go entertain yourself, just leave me alone. Well, wouldn't, for it a be, bit. wouldn't it be yeah. the easiest thing in the world? I, I'm not judging anybody no. because I think this is the most. Um, tasking <laughs> to be a, a parent in this day and age. Babylon has labored to make it darn near impossible. That's why we've got to follow the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got to do things like when you're, when you're keeping the Sabbath and you're keeping the feast, you can think of a lot of things to make them fun. You, you can, you can we teach. did learn some of those things. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, I, I think there's some family that are far more creative than us that, oh, yeah, that oh, have, have done I a lot of things just too. to really make it fun. Uh, and because, you know, part of it is when you're laboring and you're working um, 40, 50 hours during the week, and, but, you know, by the time you get home, especially if the husband and wife are both working, and my goodness, the wife's still got to do laundry. She's got to cook. And, and she's got to prepare enough food. If you don't want to cook on the Sabbath, you'd have to prepare yeah. your supper that night and have food for the yeah. next day. Because in Israel, you know how we take off Saturday and Sunday? They take off. They take off Friday and, and Saturday. The, the so that whole have, Friday yeah, has that whole day to prepare. It's the preparation. And so the whole family helps prepare. That's why, like, we, it's, it's very difficult 
for people in America if you go by a different calendar than the regular Jewish calendar. Even let's say that it, that it stays the same. It's one of these that stays the same every year and you can say, okay, this is the day I'm gonna take off. Most employers, you walk in there and you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna take these, these days off. And you're it's gonna say, because we follow the Jewish you know, we follow the Jew Jewish uh, reckoning of, of the feast, then they're going to say, okay, well, show me, show me. I had one person that said they, they wanted to know in the Word of God where that timing was. So if you don't go by the regular Jewish calendar and you can't show them on there, you see what I'm saying? It, it or, makes or it so difficult. Like with the fall feast, doing it at the last minute, that just simply doesn't work. Because uh, there are some that do it by the sighting of the, the new moon and different, and, things. and different things. So so I believe that there is much grace for people outside of Israel, not even keeping that, not in the t same time zone as it, it is for us to do the best that we can and for working families not to have such a burden put on them that they can't even think about doing the feast. Because, you know, right now I'm looking at uh, the traditional feast days. Now, the only one I calculate different now than... Uh, the, the rabbis is Pentecost because they, they, they start counting on the wrong day. Um, but as, as I look at it, I'm already basing, you know, a lot of my schedule, I'm already in June of next year. And so, uh, you, and it, you, can you imagine most work, most uh, places where you work want two or three months in advance if you need a day off, unless it's a sick day. You, you have to have a targeted date where you can say, okay, these are the days that I need mm -hmm. off. Uh, now, in a perfect world, we'd be living in a country that kept the feast, and so the entire nation shuts down, but right. we don't. Right. And so, I mean, we just, we, you just have to be strategic about it. And if, and now and if you're in a position, you. if you're in a position that you're self-employed and you want to follow the Kairite calendar or the Essene calendar or whatever, God bless you. Uh, but don't try to judge people that, be, that, that can't because of their, their jobs. You know, I've, I've had to deal with a lot of people that simply wanted to take off from Friday night to Saturday night, and uh, they almost lost their jobs over it because of, of, of them just saying, listen, I'll work all day Sunday, I'll work every Sunday, I'll work Christmas. And, and no, you no, could, no, you're not, you, you know. I know that there are lawsuits that you could go through that, but there, there, are, there, are, there that. are companies that people work for, and they, they won't let their any of their people off because they have a job to schedule that they it's mandated they got to get it done yep. so there's no sense in making things impossible i don't think that, that that god wants us to look at those feasts like oh man i gotta i gotta try to figure this out i got and and not in a position where our kids are just saying ah oh, it's the sabbath we're just gonna have to sit here you know kids can't sit and talk about the word like like grown-ups can, you know, we'd, we'd consider that a fun thing, yeah. sitting and talking about the, but, but younger kids, they can't sit still they, all they day. They got to take that in measure, and then, and then it's, it's, I think it, the Sabbath can also, because you, people are so busy during the week, it's time for bonding with the kids. Yeah, it is, and we've heard of, of groups that get together, and, and they, you know, they just jump on the kids if they don't say uh, Yeshua or another version of, of whatever they think the name of God is and things like that. Man, this is just, there's got to be a better way, guys. And that, that's all be by a religious way. spirit. Uh, in fact, I just recently read a um, review on the kingdom priesthood that the guy said, he said, listen, he says, I'm wanting to learn my Hebraic heritage, but these people where you can't say God, you can't say Jesus, you, you can't say Lord, and you got to use all these Hebrew ones, and he said, none of them even can, can agree uh, he said, he said, it just makes me want to run from it. Mm -hmm. That's and, the point. And he said, how, he said, <laughs> it's to make he it, said it was refreshing some, to find somebody teaching a balanced approach to Hebraic heritage that wasn't afraid to use the name of Jesus, because that's the one I got saved with. That's mm -hmm. the one that I have backed off devils with. That's the one, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we, we just. <laughs> we need help. <laughs> we, need, we need help. Father. We need help. Um, <laughs> You know, we're, we're, not, we're not in a Hebrew-speaking nation. We're an English-speaking nation. And, and uh, we'd be sharing it from a different perspective if I was sitting in Mexico, that unless I can speak Spanish and share the gospel and to share the commandments and everything in Spanish, uh, there is no evidence that the Apostle Paul ever taught the Gentile church Hebrew. Now, he may have expanded on, this is what this word means. He used the Septuagint, a Greek Bible, uh, every back then, everybody was at least bivocational. Like if you were a Roman citizen, you would speak Latin because that was the official language of Rome. But the commercial language was Greek. Everybody spoke Greek. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, God has set the stage for a wonderful way to be able to spread the gospel. And we, we need to make sure uh, that, uh, that we're doing the same thing because if I was speaking, in, if I was ministering in Russia, I would, I would be speaking mm -hmm. in Russian. I, wouldn't, I'm, I may bring out things that, you know, this is what the Hebrew, this is what the Greek means, but they would be calling upon the name because every tribe, every tongue mm -hmm. will call on his name and heaven recognizes it. And this was a revelation to me. At the Tower of Babel, there was a separation between the heart of man and the language of man, okay? There's no separation with heaven. That I can, I can say Jesus in Spanish or whatever the name of Jesus is uh, in, in Russian or in Chinese, but what heaven hears is the name of Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because that confusion of language is not on heaven's part, it's only on man's part. Well, you know that... Um a lot of people will say there's there's so many uh, people that you know that are are entities called Jesus, and I do think there are false Jesuses that are preached. But I've also heard people say Hebrew names and things, and I'm telling you, no I power. didn't feel I didn't feel Almighty God in the room anywhere, and so that's not some you know Magic definitive yeah. answer to someone getting everything right. In other words, it's all about the heart. Mm -hmm. It's all about the heart. And uh, I think we need to pray that prayer, Lord, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Every day. Every forgive day. Forgive us our sins. Well, I, I just wrote down some points that I wanted to pray, and then you jump in or yeah. add whatever. Is that okay? You know me, I'll always jump in. So. Okay. Well, Father, we come to you with, with heavy hearts, Father. Yes. For everything that's going on. We're so sorry, Father. We're so grieved about everything that's, that's going on in our nation. But, Father, I know that you have a heart of restoration. Yes. And, Father, I just ask that you would release a healing anointing. We ask you to pour out a healing balm on every wound. Heal us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually so that we can rise up and be used by you to tear up corrupt foundations and build your kingdom in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to pour out your spirit on every pastor, every person in the ministry. Give them a boldness like Elijah, Elisha, and Jehu to confront the Jezebel spirit in their churches. Yes. I ask you to pour out your spirit on every husband that is a believer to rise up in boldness like Jehu to confront the Jezebel spirit in their homes. Let them have a heart like Josiah to overturn every altar built to the kingdom of darkness and cleanse their temples and their homes in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to pour your spirit out on every woman to be all that God has designed her to be. I ask you to raise up your daughters that have a true anointing like Deborah, Esther, Ruth, and the Proverbs 31 woman to stand for righteousness in Jesus' name. Father, for every child that the kingdom of darkness has killed in the wombs, I ask you to raise up seven times the number of young believers yes. that will be great warriors in your kingdom and move in the gifts of the Spirit to redeem the time lost while we have been slaves in this Babylonian system. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you would wake every remnant member out of slumber. Father, that you would open their eyes. And Father, that you would endow a fresh anointing of courage. Courage to do that which is right. Courage to stand against Babylon. Courage to drive out the influence of Babylon out of their borders. And Father, to establish the kingdom and righteousness, in purity and holiness, Father. Father, I ask that you would set the stage so that those that know you Yes. Like in Daniel eleven thirty two, Father, that know their God and they'll do great exploits. Father, set the stage for that. Father, I believe that we're entering into a time of some yes. of the greatest challenges, but also some of the time of the greatest miracles that we have ever seen since the days of the book of Acts. And Father, I ask that your spirit would move. Father, let him be a bulldozer. Let him shake, wake every remnant member. And Father, let a holy discontentment come upon everyone who names the name of Christ that has Babylon percolating 
in their lives. Yes. And Father, let them drive it out of their lives yes. and out of their borders in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Yes. We love you guys. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.